What's up guys, Justin Greenholt here. Welcome to 65 Drums. Today I'm gonna to explain how piezos work. Um, piezos aren't just for drums, they're also used in guitars and military applications. It's used in a lot of different situations and it's a really, really simple thing. Also, I'm gonna explain how triggers work, how uh, switches work, all of the inner workings of your electronic drum set. All right, so first off, what is a piezo? A piezo is really simply, it's this small little disc. It's what powers all of your electronic drums. This is inside every cymbal you've ever played, every snare, every tom, every floor tom, every kick drum, every cowbell you've ever played. All of electronic drums are powered by these piezos and also switches, which I'll explain in a second. But a piezo is just a small little disc that has two layers. One layer is ceramic, the other layer is either a crystal or a metallic substance. And what happens is, it reacts to the force of you hitting your drum. So for example, if I took this Roland uh, PDX100 pad right here, and I hit it with a stick, the force would go down my hand, through the stick, and hit the mesh drum head right here. The force from the mesh drum head would go down a foam cone, and underneath the foam cone is the piezo. The piezo receives that force and generates an electric charge. That electric charge goes from the piezo all the way to your drum module. Your drum module reads the electric uh, charge as like a waveform like this, and it says, okay, so Justin hit the snare at this much velocity, so we'll trigger a sound at this much volume. That's how it all works. Now, not all drums are just like this, obviously. Some drums are made of silicon or rubber, like Yamaha. Uh, Yamaha's uh, uh, piezos are probably right underneath the layer, or maybe the piezo is actually embedded inside of their silicone pad. Um, also, not everyone uses the same style of foam cones. Uh, Roland uses a foam cone as a middleman between the piezo and the mesh drum head. Alesis uses foam rods all throughout the mesh drum head, making the mesh slightly bouncier. I'd like to point out that piezos aren't always mounted right beneath the center of the mesh drum head. They're also mounted tons of other different ways as well. So for example, this D drum trigger right here, the piezo is mounted right here. It clips on to the rim of your drum. So they can be mounted on the edge like that on top. Also, some piezos are mounted underneath the rim, but like right next to it right here on like this Go E drum pad. Some triggers are wireless, like this Versa trigger product right here where it clips near the edge of your drum shell. And there are even piezos that clip on directly to your mesh head. For example, I know Simmons does a product like that. Magnatrack has a product like that. It's not come out yet, but basically it's two magnets that clip on on top and underneath your mesh drum head. So the piezo is directly in contact with your mesh. That works well regardless of tuning. But yeah, piezos are mounted all around the drum but I think the best trigger response comes from mounting the piezo directly underneath the center of the drum. Now, of course, this comes with its own set of problems. Some drummers uh, complain of hot spots, especially with roll-on pads, where if they hit near the edge, it doesn't pick up very well because it's farther away from the piezo. This is probably a problem more with larger pads. So a 10 inch pad, you're not gonna notice anything because the piezo just has like, you know, five inches from each side to the center. However, maybe with a 14 inch pad or like a, a floor tom or something, maybe the trigger response near the edge wouldn't be as good in a larger pad like that. So the next thing I need to explain is what a switch is. A switch is basically an on off type of contact surface, uh, mostly used inside of symbols. So for example, with this symbol right here, this right here is a switch, it has two purposes. On the edge right here, if you pinch and hold it, it chokes the symbol. However, if you just hit it, it triggers the cymbal sound. Usually what happens is a switch is used in conjunction with a piezo. The only problem with switches though is that they don't sense velocity. They don't know the difference between a hard hit or a soft hit. All they know is that the switch has been turned on or off. So what a lot of cymbals have is a piezo somewhere else on the cymbal. So the drum module says, okay, Justin just hit the edge of the cymbal. Let's go look at the piezo data to see how hard he hit it. And it uses the information from both of those inputs to determine how hard I hit the cymbal. So that's how that works. Roland cymbals will usually have like a, uh, a switch around the bell, a switch near the edge, and then a piezo right here in the middle of the bow. So lastly, let me explain what a trigger is. Uh, people use the term switch, piezo, trigger all interchangeably sometimes. So it's a little confusing if you don't know what's going on. 
Uh, a trigger is basically the combination of it all. Basically, a trigger is just the piezo with some sort of mount. And of course, the headphone jack so you can actually plug it into the drum module. So this D-Drum Red Shot trigger is a single zone trigger because it only has one piezo on it. So if I mount this to a drum, it can only sense when I hit the drum head. A dual zone trigger has two piezos in it and it senses the rim and the drum head at the same time. So example for the way this drum pad has it, we have a piezo near the edge right here. This is what senses when you hit the drum head. And there's another piezo that kind of blends in right here, but it's right here on the inside, on the shell, and it senses when you hit the rim. So together they're wired together and one single wire comes out right here and goes to your drum module. So this is a dual zone pad because it has two piezos inside of it. One to trigger the rim, one to trigger the drum head. Now some guys want to do this all on their own. They don't want to just buy some sort of trigger system from R Drums or Pintech or anyone else. They just want to make it all themselves. The way to do that is just to go on eBay and you can actually buy the piezo and then the DIY guys will go and buy some sort of foam cone or make it themselves and just mount it on top of the piezo like this. And then what they'll do is they'll go get a piece of wood or something, mount it underneath their drum shell so this comes in contact with the mesh drum head and they made their own really, really cheap trigger. I've converted a snare to an electronic snare before by using this. I've converted a kick drum. However, it's not quite as accurate as just buying something from someone like R Drums or Pintech or just some sort of system you found on eBay or from Roland or something. Um, professional people went and spent hundreds of hours trying to make the best drum trigger. So it's a lot easier just to buy one from them. However, if you have free time and just want to mess around and make your own drum trigger, you can do it for extremely low prices. Uh, even just uh, buying one of these, I don't remember I don't remember the company name, I'll put it up on the screen. But I bought this little trigger right here for like four dollars and change on eBay. And I actually bought two of them. One to convert my kick drum, one to convert my snare. I've been playing around with it a lot. Um, doing it yourself is really, really hard. Trying to dial in all the sensitivities and just making it trigger properly is hard. But if you want to do that um, and you don't mind a little bit of frustration as you're trying to figure it out, uh, maybe you'll have a little bit of fun. And it doesn't cost that much just to experiment with this. However, for guys that just want to get it out of the box, put it in their acoustic drum shell and all of a sudden have a great electronic drum set now, um, buying a kit off of eBay or like one from, I don't know, Pintech or whoever, that's a better option for you if you want it to work right out of the box. All right, so that's how triggers, switches, and piezos all work. I thought you'd like a little behind the scenes of your electronic drums to show how it all works together. I know a lot of us don't take apart our electronic drums, so we don't know how any of it works, but that's how the inner workings of your electronic drums produce the sound that you hear out of your speakers or your headphones. Thank you so much for watching. I make a new video about electronic drums around twice a week right now. If you want to subscribe, that's how you'll keep on top of those videos. Also check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching. See you guys next video.